Hi everyone, I'm Shana from How To ABA. I want to talk to you about a momentary time sampling graph that we just created. Uh, the way this graph came about was because I was observing an ABA program where there was um, some classroom rules in place, behavior protocol in place, but there was no real way to track on task or off task behavior. So that's why we put this in place. So sometimes when you're tracking on task behavior and off task behavior, it's really difficult to know when one behavior starts and the next behavior stops. So you just don't know all the time. So using something like a momentary time sampling will give you probably more accurate results. What we do with momentary time sampling is you determine a designated interval. Usually that interval is somewhere between one minute and five minutes. Again, it can be whatever's doable for the therapist. Some therapists can't deal with the timer going off every minute. Personally, that would drive me absolutely crazy too. Um, for these kids, we, uh, for the child that I was observing, we picked five minutes only because that seemed pretty doable. So when the five minute mark and the timer goes off, that's when the therapist looks up and says, is a child on task or off task in that exact moment? It's not during the entire interval or anything like that. It's in that exact moment when the tire go timer goes off, is the child on task or off task? So what we did is we posted quote unquote classroom rules that were really a behavior contract and we stated them positively. There was only three of them. So, you know, we said stay on task, follow the teacher's instructions and keep my hands down. You know, we can also change those those rules or those guidelines from session to session or over time, just depending on the goals of the student program. Um, we set a timer for five minutes. That exact second we recorded whether or not the student was on task or off task. Um, and we did it like this. So here's the graph we created. So my interval length is five minutes and pretend it is, I don't know, September 10th. And at five minute mark, I'm going to say, okay, so what's the time? It is, I don't know, three o'clock. And, you know, at that exact moment when the timer goes off, the student was on task. Well, I'm going to record a yes. And then at 3.05, when the timer goes off again, the student was still on task, which is awesome. And then at 3.10, the student was off task. Okay. And then by 3.15, the student was also off task. However, at 3.20, student was off task most of the interval, interval, but at 3.20 when the timer went off, at that exact moment, the student was on task. So I have to give him a yes. At 3.25, same thing, he was off task most of the interval, but at 3.25 when that timer went off, he was on task. However, at 3.30, he was off task. Uh, 3.35, he was off task again. 3.40, he was on task. Uh, 3.30. 45, he was on task. 350, he was on task. 355, he was off task. And at four o'clock, he was off task again. Session ended, that's all there was. So I'm just going to put a strike through there. I'm just gonna delete it for the purpose of this. So he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. What is that? Seven yeses out of how many possible interviews? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So seven out of 13. I couldn't pick a more, um, a more difficult number to get into a percentage, can I? So seven out of 13 is approximately 54%. So I'm going to mark a dot in 54%. Okay. And then the next day I come back and I do it again. And, um, you know, say for instance, this time, the time is at, you know, sessions the exact same time. So three to four o'clock, I'm gonna mark down my interval. You know, he gets some yeses, he gets some noes. He's on task for about 50% of the time as well. Now, say for instance, I have a kiddo whose sessions aren't always from three till four o'clock. They're from three to four o'clock one day, but another day they're from two till five, another day they're what have you. Um, you can either decide that you want to pick the exact time every day and just take data during that time. So it could be from three to four, or you could mark in here something like this, just five minutes. And then here might be 10 minutes, right? And you could just structure it like this. So it doesn't matter when the time is. Okay, so you could do something like that instead. And that's how you would take data. Now, in terms of giving reinforcement, what we noted on here was that we looked at the total, you know, the total percentage of on-task behavior this child was 
uh, engaging in, and we came up with a reinforcement behavior or a reinforcement system based on this. So we said, you know, we looked at the student averages from session to session. You know, in the beginning, the student was successful. He, we wanted to be successful and earn reinforcement. So, you know, this student we worked with actually got 60% and was around hovering around the 60 to 70% of on task behavior. So let's just change this and just pretend here with me. Say, for instance, it was a student I saw the other day, you know, he was hovering around you know, this mark here. So what we said is that if the student gets 60% or higher, then he will earn reinforcement for the day um, for on-task behavior. Once the student is engaging in this target percentage, so 60% for three consecutive sessions, we're gonna increase the target percentage by 5%. So what does that look like? This is what it would look like. So I'm going to say, okay, so my target percentage is 60% right now, okay? So it looks like this student has earned 60% every day, which is awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to say he needs 70% or he needs 65% which would be right in about here. So this will be my next new average, right? And then he's gonna get 65% for a couple of days. Oh, he didn't make it one day, he dropped down, he doesn't earn reinforcement, but then he learns very quickly that he gets reinforcement, three consecutive sessions. I can change this mastery criteria up to 70%. Now, I typically don't do a mastery criteria of you know, more than 80 or 90% on task for the entire session. Judge your learner, but nobody is on task 100% of the time, myself included. So, you know, take a look at your learner and see what is realistic uh, for them to do. But that's how you would use that graph. And that is posted in our behavior resource section.